Hello, good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us here today on our webinar. And thanks for our seminar attendees as well for taking the time to come down to today's session. My name is Ethan. I'm the education lead here in IG Singapore. So today, I'm very honored to have Bini Ong, uh, joined by Bini Ong here with us today on our this very first part one of our trading workshop series. So this is actually a three-part trading workshop series and today will be the first session. We have two more upcoming sessions as well uh, for next Wednesday and the one following uh, after next week, Wednesday as well on the same timing. So feel free to sign up and join us as well. So for today, right, um, I just do a very quick introduction for Bini first. So Bini herself is a professional trader and she has also done a lot of training and educational content and pieces for various uh, banks and brokerage for both retail and institutional clients. So she herself has more than 15 years of uh, trading experience actually and even uh, educational experience. So um, if you have any questions and during any at any point of her presentation, just feel free to type it in the question box. So there is actually this question box over here. If you are if you are joining us online from the uh, web-based platform, you see that there's this question panel under the GoToWebinar control panel. You are able to type in your questions and now and then we will actually take a look at the questions and answer some of them as we uh, proceed with today's session. And of course, if you are joining us from your mobile as well, there is a question box below as well. So. Um, before I proceed, right, I forgot to do a mic check. So if you are able to, for the participants online, if you are able to hear me, right, please type a yes in the question box right now. If you are able to hear me, just don't mind, just feel free to type in a yes. All right, I see a few yeses coming in, so I understand the audio is working well. So um, today's session, right, Bini will actually share about uh, this rinse and wash um, pattern and of course this pattern is um is, is useful to us I'm, I'm very sure that the session today right we will be able to have more perspective when we you know try to uh, make trading decisions and when we try to trade with after going through this session we have a better idea on how we can execute trades and what to look out for as well so that we can have better trading outcomes Okay, so before I pass to Bini, I just wanted to do a very quick disclaimer. So today's session is actually organized by IG Singapore and we have invited Bini as a kind of like a third party guest speaker. So I just wanted to highlight that every, any content and everything that she said today, right, and the presentation and presented today is primarily for educational purposes. So if you happen um, to, you know, take away like, um, if there's any form of direction being implied in any part of the presentation, please do not treat it as trading advice. So it just, just treat it as more of a edu for, for educational purposes only. So um, with that, I'm going to pass the time to Bini now to start off her presentation. Just let me flash her slides. Okay. Just want to thanks for the webinar site that you can hear me. So same thing, I need to do a mic check for those who can hear me in the webinar. Please type a one. And you can see me also, I'm here. I'm actually right now in one marina boulevard. Okay, that's good. Good job. All right. Um, so let's uh, start off the session. How are you? It's very good that uh, I get to see you guys again because I've been doing uh, webinars for about two years already. And uh, I've been starting to do physical sessions, face-to-face -face session since uh, about uh, two months ago. Right, so very happy to see all of you and just play with that mouse thing. Okay, maybe Ethan, you just help me control. All right, uh, the topic today is uh, stop being washed and means by the market. Uh, before I talk any more things, I need to flash the disclaimer, all right, because uh, unfortunately we have to be very strict with the disclaimer. Can we have the disclaimer? So the first disclaimer comes from IG. Uh, basically, uh, any views that's being talked here, displayed here, uh, they are not um, uh, advised. Okay, they're just for educational purposes. All right, um, the next one, okay, the next will be disclaimer for myself. Whatever that's being uh, discussed here, I'm not qualified to give any financial advice. Okay, so we can have 
discussion here, but whatever it is, it would be just educational. All right, so let's pause for a while. If you can, just look at the disclaimer. Okay, uh, I think that we are very strict on this part because uh, I was just sharing with Ethan that um, I'm also training with uh, SGX Academy. All right, so they are very strict on all this disclaimer, especially when we are seeing you guys face to face. Okay, so let's move on. All right, so if you have not uh, seen me or heard from me, all right, uh, I've been giving quite a lot of talks and trading. So one of the key things uh, that I'm doing is a lot of automations, meaning that for myself, my interest in, in automations, and you're gonna find this a lot from my the three parts presentation. That means the three parts presentation, I'm gonna give you an insight to a bit of a evolutions in terms of the trading over the years. All right, especially if you had been trading for maybe 20 years, 25 years. All right, because I started when I was very young. I started when I was 17 years old. Yeah, and uh, my first machine was not computer, but a television, a small little seven, 14 inch television. And I was using teletext. Anybody heard of this teletext? And I was trading into the Malaysian clock market, OTC. All right. So similar to what we are seeing right now, about two or maybe five years ago, all right, during 1996, pre-financial crisis, pre-1997, everything that you buy, every single stock huh, that you buy, you just have to hold a little while and you will sure make money. Okay, that was that point of time. But when the financial crisis came, right? Whatever that is, you just hope that you will just stop falling, okay? And one of the biggest driver at that point of time was um, the movement of US dollar against two currencies. One was Thai baht, the other one was Indonesian rupiah. Okay, why was that? Because at that point of time, the two countries, not only they're being attacked by Soros, but their currencies has been dropping tremendously against the US dollar, All right? So I'm not sure whether you recall, and I started at that point of time. So I started making a lot of money pre-1997, and I actually lost a lot of money after and during 1997, all right? And I'm still here, luckily, all right? Uh, with the method, um, I've started training, but with the method, I actually sort of uh, stopped working when I was 35 years old, I'm actually 45 right now. Tomorrow, I'm turning 46. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so, I came back at 38 years old. Okay, partly because I think that life shouldn't be like that. And I started actually doing a lot of corporate training. So, IG, we will be um, talking to the retail clients. But, um, you know, like two, two weeks ago, I was actually doing uh, training for Malaysia brokers. Thailand brokers, all right? So a lot of corporate training, and of course the retail clients. Now one of the key things is later on, you're gonna find that actually trading can be automated, and this is the three part series. First part is to talk about the technique. What kind of evolutions are you seeing right now? And what kind of changes or difficulties you're facing right now because of automations? That's number one. Number two, of course, then with this knowledge, we talk about solutions for you. Okay, so that will be the second part. So I hope to see you next week here, same time. And also for those in the webinars as well. Okay, and the third part would be then really how you can outsource the problem to automations. And I don't ask that you outsource it 100%. I only need that you outsource probably some of the menial work like what I'm doing here. Which means that when I'm actually standing here doing the session um, at nine o'clock, even without going to my desk, at nine o'clock, my trades can be fired if there is a signal. Okay, so that's the type of automations I'm actually doing. Okay, so that means that before I came here, all right, at five o'clock, if there is a signal, there's a trade actually going on for me, and I can, I can come here and talk whatever. And even if there's a market crash, I mean, hopefully not, right? Um, then my trades will be managed. So that's the type of automations that we can do so that we can help it to manage the psychology. So that will be covered in the third part, okay? 
So let's uh, move on. Okay. Okay. Just control here. So let me just uh, share with you my my time. Okay, I start the day very early. Uh, it's like maybe five fifty. That's how how I start my day, and I stream two four six. Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. If it doesn't rain, um, why is that so? Because uh, I used to do exercise every day. Okay, because I sit a lot on my screen every day, um, in my in front of the screen. So it's actually very bad for for the body also. All right. So if you have seen me like maybe ten years ago or eight years ago, I look the same. <laughs> I mean now versus ten years ago, I look the same apart from a bit of wrinkles here and there. That's what the students commented. Okay, I believe that this is very important. And um, the, the first market that I did in the morning is to trade into the Hong Kong and the Singapore market. Okay, so I do the futures. In fact, I have a course with IBF, in, uh, Institute of Banking and Finance of Singapore, all right, to teach into the futures. And then I do the, the stocks, all right, for the uh, uh, Hong Kong and as well as Singapore. And then afternoon, 1 p.m. will be doing the FX and the European market. Then after that, um, 5 p.m. Uh, will be also into the FX and into the indexes. And then at about 9, okay, usually you see zigzag zag because usually at 9 or maybe 7 right now, for example here, will be the training session. And then sometimes at night, I have my own training because my students are, are over the places. So we need to find a good time to train. And usually about 10.30, I will sleep. Yeah, so that's that's the schedule. Okay, why I want to flash this schedule is because a lot of you guys, I presume, will be working. A lot of you guys might not be working, might be trading full time. How many of you are totally new? Totally new. Okay, yeah. How many of you are trading maybe like uh, aggressive? Okay, yeah. So I, I presume that when you're trading aggressive, you're also working partially or not working? Not working, okay. I'm actually consider working and not working because uh, I'm lucky that my work is trade um, and therefore in a way that trade and work at the same time, okay, as well as to do really um, a bit of a training uh, here and there, all right. So for those online here, uh, let me know whether you are working or not, okay. Uh, and then you are trading at the same time because that's very important for whatever that I'm going to present. All right. Now, uh, if this is so, let's move on to the next slide where I'm going to talk about number one is that are you often being stop out for those with experience in trading? What is the meaning of stop out? Stop out means that uh, whenever you put in a trade, before you see profit coming in, all right, you find that you often hit into losses. And you had to cut your losses by cutting the position. And after that, right, when you cut your position, right, what happened next? It will move in the direction as what you originally intended. Anybody with this experience before? Yeah, often. Me too, no? Okay, I am like you, even at this stage. Huh? And I have to admit that there's no, um, no one all right, who aren't stop out. Okay, so um, I work with a lot of um, trading teams, a lot of uh, family officers, a lot of uh, proprietary fund managers, etc. And I design trading system for them. I have a group of programmers, all right, and then basically we work together and we, we design system for them. So we roughly know what kind of system they want. Although I have to say is that uh, I can't review any of those because we sign agreement, right? But you find that the design of the trading system right now is very different. So I'm just going to talk about what is the wash and means pattern and how to strengthen a wash and means pattern, all right? And then we're going to do live if we have time. I love live session because I always um, like to show you how we can apply it. Now, what is wash and means? The worst thing about wash and means is the frustration involved. What is the frustration involved, right? Because once you don't know what happened to your trade, you don't know how things have gotten bad, you don't know how to solve it. 
Okay, so for example, when you first started, likely you're going to be very lucky. Okay, so recently I just met up with a student. So the student told me this, right? She started with a $5,000 account, reasonable, and started trading into Forex. And in two months, the $5,000 became $20,000. So that seems to be a very motivating story, right? Okay. So she using what I've taught, which is wash and reads, right? So we know everything, but she thought that she can become a full-time trader. So she started to say, hey, look, let me just continue to, to learn more. So we all know that learning more is good, isn't it? So she went to learn from different gurus and whatever good things about different gurus, she imported what she think is good. All right, and then she put it into the system that made her make money. You know what happened next? A typical story. What happened? She lost all her money. <laughs> 20,000 all gone. Okay, now why is that? So now, because if you, if you realize that when you are, when you learn Kung Fu, right? And maybe that this Kung Fu is very good, but when you mix it with another Kung Fu, you find that you get really very confused. Okay, so there are different systems where we mix and match in a very fine way. But when you add different things inside, then things get wrong. But that's when, all right, when we have different systems added inside and where in the world people are using different things, it's very easy for price to exceed a little bit. And that results a position being stopped out. And after that, you find that you're in a loss and later on you will resume back in your original direction so remember if this had happened to you then you are not alone so this is what i'm trying to say okay now if this is not alone so let me just ask you a question also interaction from people in the webinar all right so ask you a question at the place of the blue arrow what would you likely be doing of Think of doing okay so let me just bring you a little bit right so at the place of the blue arrow all right now if you can see i mark in with a red arrow here which shows one thing okay so that is called a resistance okay why why is there a resistance because you know it was a price high so this place here yeah let me just get this one Okay, now this arrow here at the price high was a resistance because it looks like a mountain, All right? And then the one which is at the green color arrow here looks like a support, okay? Because that's like a, you know, a U shape. Okay, now the other one which is at the blue color arrow here looks like a support, okay? Because we can draw a line crossing a resistance to a support and that becomes a theory where if it was previously proven as a support we will assume that that's a support will remain okay so that's the assumption here All right so if this is true then let me ask you one question for those who are experienced in it at the blue color arrow what would you do would you more likely to buy or would you more likely to sell you cannot wait huh? you can't do nothing in my session, you have to do something. Okay, so for those who are on the webinar, let me know whether you're more likely to buy or more likely to sell. For those in the seminar, if you're more likely to buy, raise your hand. If you're more likely to sell, don't raise your hand. Okay, very good. Okay, now I can see the answer. And slowly as we progress from the, from the slide, you will know that all my questions are all trick questions. Okay. Now, so let's see the outcome here. The outcome is that, okay, so from this blue arrow here, which was what happened, all right, and this place, this was that blue arrow, this one. Okay, so this was the blue arrow here, okay. But price moves up, it made a very typical, like reversal pattern, where you have a dodgy candlestick, and then you have a green color, type of a confirmation, right? So that's what we learned from the textbook, okay? When you have this very, very obvious levels, bear in mind, last time, 20 years ago, 
when we don't have a lot of machines, don't have a lot of automations. Charts are not drawn on computer. They are drawn and plotted on graph paper. Have you tried that before? Am I, my, my stage of starting, charts are drawn on graph paper. You can see how, how far ago I was at, at that point of time. Okay. Now, so when these levels are not very well known at that point of time, then those old theory works very well. But when you have all these levels which are very, very well known by the market, then that typical theory will not come true. Okay. It will be very likely that the market will just push it up a little bit and then come back down, all right, to hit the blue arrow again. All right, then where is this blue arrow? Okay, it was another stronger support, all right, back far where we see that green arrow. Okay, now what is the meaning here? It means that if you had like what we did last time or you did last time to buy in that position, you would have been stop out. I mean, you won't be stop out if you don't put a stop loss. But by all sense, when you see this price coming down so much like this, okay, you would have been stop out. Right? Or you would be scared until that you have to stop yourself out. When you stop yourself out, you hit into a stronger level and all it goes and that's where you find, oh, why? What happened? What happened to me? Why did I allow this to happen? Okay. And maybe at that point of time, you have no more confidence to enter the position anymore. All right? It could be that you have tried so many times and then by the time you really moved up, no more. Okay, just bear in mind that the market won't make your job simple. So this is what you have to take note of. Okay, so therefore, I'm just going to share with you this phenomenon. All right, so when you are trading or investing out there, remember this phenomenon where we call a wash. A wash is usually where there is a fake move. Okay, now these fake moves are often in a very obvious level or in an obvious move, all right? So we can take a, take a look at how this fake move evolved. And after that, why, why is the fake move so often? Some people think that, hey, look, it's the brokers who are actually trading against us. So whenever that we have, let's say, uh, a movement that costs us to always lose money because we are stop out, we always think that it's the broker who are doing that. But bear in mind, in this world right now, trading, in the big guys, with the big guys are very, very much automated. So the levels that we take time to see, they can see that levels in nano milliseconds, and they can see so many things using computer in multi perspective. All right. I mean, why can I share this with you? Because I work with them. I can't review what we, we did, but I can share with you what kind of things that they are able to achieve, right? So when this happens, they don't make our life easy. Then what they do, they can move price and stop. They don't need to be in cahoot with the brokers. What they can do is they just have to push down price a little bit so that they can flush out those retailers out there or those stop loss which are at a very obvious level. And once they flush out already and they have accumulated enough, and then they just rinse it back up. So very often, if you find that you are often right, but before you are right, you are always stop out. Ah, then you are not alone. Okay? All right. So next question. If this is the case, if you tell me this is the case, then do we have solutions? Okay. Now let me ask you one question here. All right. And so for those in the um webinar let's do a bit of a participation again i like to color code my charts okay take a look at the one which is in green color here now what do you call this do you call this a support level or resistance level a support level is one with the u shape a resistance level is the one with the inverted u shape so is this a support or is this a resistance the support s right so I like to color code and I like to make it simple. So this is the S. Now, you learned in a typical textbook, all right, an S, a support, can in turn become a resistance. OK, 
Okay, so if you take a look into the one that is in orange color, then that is it a U shape or inverted U shape? The one in orange color. Inverted U shape, right? And therefore, that looks like a resistance because it's more like a hill, a mountain. Agree? Okay, so therefore, what we have is that we have this green line being drawn here. Why is this green line being drawn here? So this is a typical support resistance level, horizontal support resistance level that can read in textbook. Okay, in the textbook, they will say, hey, look, when price closed above or break out, it's a typical strategy, very popular 20 years ago, 30 years ago. All right. So when price break out of a support and resistance, you can take an action. Okay, now this green line here was a support, turned into a resistance. And if you see the one that is marked in blue color, in this green color bar here, green color candlestick here, right? Next question to you, and also those in the webinar. When you see this, price would have broken out of a lever. This lever was there acting as a resistance. Why? Because their price was actually below it. Therefore, when it break above it, that's called a breakout. It broke out of a resistance. Question to you. Think logically. I don't think that I'm tricking you, okay? I'm not, I might not trick you. Are you going to buy or sell here? Okay, for those who are looking to buy in the webinar, please type a buy. For those who are looking to buy right now in the webinar, please raise your hand. Now the response gets a bit milder because previously you were trick. Now you start to wonder, right? How come I'm actually presenting it this way? Okay, now even though you don't think it is a buy, now think. If you see this in your heart, are you more likely to think that you are going to buy or to sell? Is this an action that looks very positive for you or negative for you? This particular candle, I want to ask. These two green candles here, the two green candles here, do they look bullish to you, which is positive to you, or do they look a bit bearish to you, which is negative to you? Bullish, right? Bullish, green color, long bar, right? So with all the news headlines out there, plus a little bit of it, CNBC, oh yeah, so bullish, I think it will go up, blah, 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 blah right? We are stirred, right? But don't forget, when things are being very obvious, that's where many times wash and winds can happen. You see that? What is the meaning of wash and winds? One bar goes up green color, like it's the top of the world. Then followed by one bar come back down, like it's the end of the world, okay? Now, can you imagine those people who bought at the green color bar? What do I mean by the green color bar? Those people who bought here at this one, how would they be feeling? Happy or sad? Webinar side. Those people who are buying, who bought into the green color bar, are they feeling happy or sad right now? Set right okay now why are they set because then by the time they see the, 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 the second bar that came out right which is a red color here they know that their position might not be too good anymore all right they know that whatever they paid right might be at a loss okay now we are not saying that we are not saying things like okay um we're gonna laugh at those people who lose money but we just want to know one thing in this session there is such things called fake moves in the market. All right. If you are being stopped out, you are not alone. Can you prevent yourself being stopped out? The answer is no. But if you are being stopped out, can you recover your trade? The answer is yes. Okay. So there's a bit of a changes here. All right. Now, if you, same thing, if we go and fight in a battle, I mean, I'm not saying we will die, right? But you know, we will lose the battle, but we need to know why we lose in that particular battle. Okay, so that's a very important technique here. Okay, so with this, 
all right? We're going to talk about why these things happen. Because when we started off with trading, all right, with the knowledge of this view called technical analysis, with the look of charting, we don't have 20 years ago, 30 years ago, we do not have things like computers, machine, and we don't have everybody having multiple computers. I just sharing with Ethan just now. I bought my Mac, right? So this is the first, uh, I'm, not, I'm not a Mac fan, but I just happen to have a lot of Mac machine. This machine here was uh, 11 years old, and I just changed the battery myself. I look at YouTube, pry open, buy a new battery, change it is like new, okay? Um, but at home, I have two more Mac. Two new ones. And I just bought a new iPad Pro. Whatever, I didn't buy that. It's a gift. Okay, but what I'm trying to say is that 20, 30 years ago, not many people will have a machine in front of us. Okay, right now we have, I saw like um, a, a 13 year old teenager. He has five handphones. Yes. Why? I also don't understand why he has five handphones. Okay, so all these machines are very important, but you look at those technical indicators, RSI, stochastic, whatever technical indicators, right? They are all developed 20 to 30 years ago when we don't have all those automations. Okay, now then at that point of time, it becomes that if you don't have that automations, then 20, 30 years ago, simple technique, the big guys can make money already. But now with everybody knowing automations, people learning Python for machine learning, anybody learning Python right now? or very expert programmer. I know nothing about programmer, <laughs> programming. But I can read programming languages. But I don't know how to code. I, I, I dare not say I know how to code, right? Because then there are so many smart programmers out there. Okay, but if you look at the evolution, it means that whatever that's being developed 20 or 30 years ago might not be too re relevant right now. Okay, all right? So yes, we can still be using things that uh, in 20 years, 30 years ago, but I think that we need some change here. And then let's talk about how to create this wash and means pattern. Okay, now in wash and means pattern, you can use it in any time frame, meaning that whether you are trading intraday or whether you are trading into a investor profile, you can use wash and means. All right. Now a lot of myth is that is wash and means a candlestick pattern. No, because it's a lot more flexible. Candlestick, you have like things like dodgies, you have like morning stars, harami. It looks a light. But what we rely on is this line, all right, called a wash line. Okay, so for those back in the webinar, so let's be very, very uh, attentive to this part here because I can't see your reactions, right? So let me just take you through how to construct a wash and means pattern and how to recognize them and how to use the wash line. So to the left side, you're going to see a bullish wash and means pattern. You realize that um, what I did, right, is to draw in, um, in here on the screen, it looks like a red color line. But my own screen, I call this a magenta line. Okay, I color code my things. So when we have a bullish wash and means pattern, the wash line must be color coded in magenta or red color. Okay, now why is that so? Because if you put on the hat of buying, you want to buy when price is low. All right, okay, so therefore, when price is low, it means that price has to drop. Agree? Now, when price drop, then there will be bearish candles now in this case here extracted from ig trading platform a bearish candle is denoted by a red color candle okay so therefore how to draw this wash line here how to draw this wl in the bullish pattern for those in the webinar all right note we are talking about the bullish pattern and to draw in the wash line which is a red color dotted line we just have to find two candles or two bars okay now then as long as you have the second bar that close below the previous bar low i repeat this statement here as long as you have a bar which is 
this red color bar here, the long red color bar here, that closed below the previous bar low. I mean, I'm not talking about um, the bar before, the, the bar, two bars before. I'm talking about immediately before. So we are talking, we are comparing always the current and the one before. You can't jump. Okay? The key thing is you can't jump. It must be simple. All right? Even trading with that, with the funds, they also can't have complicated system. Okay, so as long as you have a close, a closing price means the body, all right, is below the previous bar low. It must be a low. Then you are able to draw a horizontal line on the previous bar low. Okay, it must be drawn on the low of the previous bar. Okay, so this will become your wash line. So as long as you have the current bar that keep on closing below the previous bar low, you continue to draw your wash line. Okay, and once you have a new wash line being developed, the previous wash line will become irrelevant. That means that if I have a new wash line and then being drawn, the previous wash line that I've drawn will not be relevant anymore. So we only take the most recent wash line. Okay, now what? And how do we translate the behavior of the people here? Now, some people would have shorted at this red color bar, all right? When they have shorted, it resulted this bearish bar. When they have shorted, meaning that they are negative in the future, all right? And they wouldn't want to see the position moved against them. Okay, then what was the basis of them shorting? That means what was the basis of them creating that down red color bar? The basis was that because price broke below a previous low level. So that was the basis of them actually selling. All right now, because of this basis, then what they're afraid of is that if price turns up to close above the wash line, and then that becomes a wash and means. It means that those people who have shorted at the red color bar, the next bar after red color, the next bar, the, red, uh, uh, the next bar, the second, uh, sorry, if this red bar is the first one, people have shot on the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth. Okay, when they see the sixth bar happening, those people who have shorted then will be lo losing money. So that's the whole idea here. Okay, we call this red color bar a wash bar. Okay, and we call this green color bar that closed above the wash line a rings bar. Okay, so later I will mark the wash and rings for you. Okay, so in the wash and rings pattern, what we are interested in is we're interested in, in understanding dynamics of the market. We want to know who are losing money, who, who are winning money at that point of time. Okay, so remember, people have shorted in the wash bar, and when you see price closing above the wash line, that becomes a rinse bar and your entry would be at the rinse bar on the completion of the rinse bar. Okay. Now, I will skip the entry portion now. I will keep, I will keep the entry portion at the third session. Okay? All right? To make sure you are here for the third session. No, because I, there's a sequence in the things that are being taught. Okay, now a few questions here. Uh, wash and rinse we work across different time frame. That means that you can have this bar as a day bar. So it doesn't matter if it's on a day bar, then we would be looking at these as a day chart, a day washed and a day rinse. If you have this in a week bar, week chart, so this would be a week washed and a week rinse. Okay, so it can be used in any different time frame. It doesn't need to be um, uh, in, you know, in, in the lower time frame. Okay, but when we trade, there's a series, there's a sequence. Sequence means that we'll always be looking at the higher time frame for that wash and wins and to execute in the lower time frame. So that's the sequence here. Okay, but this one I won't talk about it. Let's continue here. Okay, so let's talk about the bearish wash and wins. Okay, what is the bearish wash and wins here? Same thing, the reverse, we are looking for a sell. When we are looking for a sell, price must move up, must go up. 
then we want to sell. Why? Because you want to sell when price is at a high. You don't want to sell when price is at a rock bottom. That's a lousy deal. You want to sell when price is at a high. So this is a very important idea for the wash and rinse pattern. So how do you draw the wash line? Same thing. You compare against the previous bar. If you take a look at this long green line here, a long green bar here, right? So this long green bar here can close or close above the previous high. Agree? That means that the very long green bar actually closed above the previous high. You are able to draw in a wash line. So therefore, when, we, when it is a cell, we will color code and we draw in a green wash line here. However, why didn't I put it on the chart? Because the next green bar, the second green bar, let me just point to those on the screen. All right, so the second green bar here, which is this one, okay, the second green bar here. All right, now this second green bar close above the previous long green bar high. Because of this, we are able to construct another wash line. Agree? So we draw in a horizontal line and when the next bar or any subsequent bar, we don't really care how many bars, it can be the immediately the next one, or it can take like 10 bars, 20 bars, it doesn't really matter. As long as any bar that close below the wash line and that becomes a wash and meets. Okay, it must always be based on the wash line. Okay, one of the questions is that how huge is the bar then consider a valid wash. Very good question. So what we do is that in automations, we become very strict. About in automations, we will measure the range of all these bars, all right, in by using the average true range. So we will take the average true range of the historical price, and then we will say that if the bar had closed above the previous high by a lot more, multiple of the average true range, then it is unlikely to be a wash bar. What is a wash bar? A wash bar is an artificial push to cross, to cause people to be in the wrong position. And then it's a trick of the market. So a wash bar must be such that the push is not a lot above the previous high. Okay, so this is true for the buy pattern as well. So you can see the second bar here. The push up above the previous high is actually a lot more smaller. So when you have a little bit of a push up above a level, a wash line, then there is a higher chance that this is a wash bar. Okay, so it all depends. So for example, um, if I am standing here at this place, and if I have a huge jump, over to the other side, then very likely, right, I'm going, I'm, I'm going to walk towards you because I actually jump all the way here and more likely I'm going to continue forward. But if I just stand here and I just move in front, ah, then it means that very likely I might be rocking, I might just be go, going back. Okay, so we cannot have that wash bar to be too much above the previous height. Okay, now then, next question. Some of you might be asking, is wash and means a candlestick pattern? The answer is no. That means that please don't come here to look at wash and means, all right, as a candlestick pattern. Now, if you take a look at this particular chart here, now this is a chart of dollar versus yen. If you are trading a forex, anybody trading a forex? Yes, right. Okay, good. Now, dollar versus yen, you know, right, is right now trading at one hundred forty-six. 145 and nobody would have expected it to move up so much okay. but this time frame here if you look at the time frame one bar is one week okay and we apply that same wash and means there was a close a red color bar that closed below the previous low okay so let me just mark that down for those who are in the webinar it means that at this place here at this place uh, here, right, there, were, there was a red color bar. Let me just mark that for them. Okay. 
That means I'm talking about this red color bar that closed below a previous low. So this is a wash. Why? Because a wash is simply defined as a bar that closed below the previous low, and that's it. All right, now with this, I'm able to draw in this line here, which is called a wash line. Okay, now take a look at, you don't really see any of the prices within this congestion here, closing above the wash line. Okay, the only one happens at about this bar here. So this was the bar. Okay, now, so let me just ask you one question. This is not a candlestick pattern. Okay, now, but if we can use wash and means, we are also able to quantify this particular movement. Anybody ever wonder why a certain move can be very explosive or why many times, right, some move can just move up like bucks money and never come down? Okay, it has to do with how much time and how much money are involved inside a particular move. Okay, why is that so? Because if you take a look into this particular pattern here, which consists of the first down bar being that wash bar, and then this one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, ten bars multiplied by five trading days, 50 trading days of that people, of the money, are all being suppressed below the wash line. Okay, what were they thinking of? They were thinking that probably dollar yen is too high already. They might be thinking of actually shorting it. Okay, because remember, when you are thinking of buying, there will be the other side of the people who are always thinking of actually selling. So if this is the case, right, then once you see the number 11 bar happening here, which I call this a rinse bar, all right, it means that when the rinse bar happened, it totally washed and rinsed 10 weeks of traders. That means that 10 weeks of positioning of money out there are thinking that dollar yen could be bearish. But just using one week, it totally wash and means that 10 weeks of bearishness. So then presenting another one more question to you. If I see this wash and means that was a wash and means of 10 weeks of movement, if it ever rings back up just by using one week, do you think that this movement is going to be strong? Yes, right. Is that logical? Is that something that becomes very mathematical? easy for you to understand okay all right so with wash and rinse it not being a candle state the one thing the strength all right against all the method is that it can be quantified okay now the ability of having a position or trade being quantified is very important and i'll talk about how to quantify it furthermore using auto boxes so that will be covered in the second session. Okay, so this position here in dollar yen is not surprising of why dollar yen after moving to 110, it can continue straight up all the way to 130. Okay, in fact, that, that was a, a very easy trade for us just to trade in the dollar yen at that point of time. All right. Okay, now I'm just going to pause a while to ask questions. Um, anybody, any questions from the ground? All right. If there are no question from the ground, I'm just going to look at the questions from the webinars to answer them. Okay. So let me just get question from the webinar first. All right. And then I'll look at the questions from the webinar. Any questions from here? Yep. Okay, um, because this is Forex, volume is not important, okay? But even when you are looking at stocks, right? Even volume is not important because wash and beans, the setup, right? is often earlier than the actual breakout. So in, in lesser stocks, when you see an up bar, right? You want to see an increase in volume. 
So that's where the whole world knows about it already. And that is accompanied with a breakout trade. But when we have a wash, that means we are likely to get in one or two bars earlier than a breakout trade. So we get in actually earlier. That's why volume wasn't inside here. Okay, good question. All right, no more from here. Good. Now, no more from here. So let me just look at questions from the webinar. How often does the wash and rinse occur? Uh, very often. We get to trade that every day. Uh, it happens in every instrument. All right. Um, whether you are doing forex or indexes, the most recent trade where we make a lot of money was to do a wash and rinse into CN50. Anybody trade CN50? You are able to trade that in IG um, platform. Okay, so uh, it's a Chinese market, it's Chinese index, FTSE, CN50. Okay, but IG offers that. Um, so we caught the bottom and that easily got us about 400 points. And then after that, when it plunged down, later we can take a look into CN50 and that we got about 500 points. Up and down, easy money on wash and means. Okay, the only problem where wash and means it's not really very, or, or rather all method doesn't work very well, is when the range is actually very tight, okay? All right, I, I, I'm sitting down here to control the, the monitor, the, the computer, so therefore you can see where I'm marking already. Um, okay, so I, that's answered already. Okay, so let me just move on to the next one. Okay, now just to highlight, this is the whole duration of dollar yen. So just now when I highlighted 110, all right, that was the wash and means here at 110. Now I know that you can't see the bigger screen, right? But at around this place here, we traded in that wash and means again. All right, you can see this red color bar, which is the wash line, followed by the reams bar here. Okay, and then after it moves up, and then we trade it in here again on the wash and means back in 135. Okay, so um, one thing later on you will hear me see, right, uh, talk about is the need to trade with the trend. Okay, all right, so I, I, I will talk about this later on. But I just want to show you, all right, that you can use wash and means even in the weekly chart. Um, for us, we use wash and means in the day chart and we execute that in a H4 time frame. So that is our profile. Okay, but you can just modify that later on, not an issue. Okay, so let me just erase this and move on. Okay, again, this is not a trick. Okay, I just look at it normally. For those in, in, in webinar and in the seminar here, Ask you a question again. This bar here. When you see this, what are you likely going to do? First, huh, you have to answer is this bar bullish or is this bar bearish? For those in the webinar, let me know what you think. For the bar that I mark in, all right, whether it is bullish or bearish. What do you think? Are you likely going to buy or are you likely going to sell? But with, with that watch and means, you will think the other way already. Now you don't have, you don't have to answer me, right? You, you know that this is a trick, right? You will think that every time she shows this, is to trick me. So I better say, I want to sell. <laughs> oh. Exactly, draw a watch line. That's what I need you to do. Yes, we draw a wash line, right? Okay, let's draw a wash line then. Okay, now, what wash line to draw? Is it a green wash line or is it a magenta wash line? See, my, that's my question. It's not a trick question. Is it a green wash line at this bar here or it is a magenta wash line? For those both in webinar or seminar, let me know. Green, green or... Mac. So this is the bullish wash line or this is the bearish wash line? 
Okay, so bullish, you should be drawing a MAC, right? Uh, a bullish means that, uh, that's where I need to test you. A bullish means that you should be drawing a low. When price break a low, below, below previous low, then you draw a magenta. When you draw a green, remember I said before, this is a contrarian mindset. Everything is contrarian. So when price break above the previous high, you should be drawing a see what they have green line yes green line because it's contrarian what we want to do is that when price continue to go higher you are actually looking for a sell okay you have to think this way i want to buy i want to buy low i cannot have someone to go and trick me to go and buy high all right buying high is a lousy deal same thing right when you go and want to buy something you always look for i mean of course when you buy high then it's good value but then if you can buy the same thing at a lower price why not right okay so when price break higher you always always look for that low okay so in this case here i'll be drawing in a green wash line here very good. So that's the wash line I need to draw. Okay, now not only that, we need to do a bit of a analysis. Okay. You realize that here was a low. Okay. Agree? And you can extend this low here all the way. And the same thing happened. This was a high. So this low here was a support. And this high here was a resistance. All right. Now, when you extend this line all the way, all the way, all the way, you realize that that's when market likes to trick people. Because if others can see a horizontal line there, why do they have to force the candle to behave as if it is ultra bullish, isn't it? Do you agree with me? Right? If you haven't spotted that horizontal line that I'm drawing here, without the inside of the horizontal line, you would have, and you would be thinking it is a very bullish signal because of that candle that closed all the way up. Now, this is the second thing I want to share with you. All right. Now, go back to all the trades that you lost money. Go back to any chart that you want to look even right now, you will find a very common phenomenon. One bar goes up like it's at the top of the world. The next day, the other bar will just plunge. Boom. Go back and do it. For those in the webinar session, you can go and find any prizes, any chart, any instrument, whether you are trading into SDI, right now or you trade in the gold or in the oil or in the, in the fx cash all right into in the crypto you find this very common phenomena it goes one bar up or one bar down like the end of the world or the top of the world and the next moment pum, it goes up okay so these are what it means that whoever out there have total knowledge about this line here just that some people don't have okay and they create this ultra bullishness ultra bearishness to trap all of us in or to trap those people who have no knowledge in and the next moment boom. okay so this is wash and means now in other words wash and means will happen at very obvious levels yeah yeah okay wait let me just clean away here see the line that i've drawn here okay was a typical support resistant line okay now when we draw a support resistant line what we usually will do right is to try to map in a low a turning point so usually we'll do this we'll just visualize that this is like u shape okay and then once it's broken this is like inverted u shape all right then this one here that's why we are able to connect the low point here, low point, 
and then to the high point. So this is a concept called support resistance, where the support interchange with that resistance level. Okay, so this is the very obvious level. All right, but um, what I'm trying to highlight is what is the trigger here. The trigger is that you might see this as a candlestick pattern, but sometimes you are not confident of it. Okay, but rather see it as this push was a push, all right, that closed above the previous high. And I'm just going to result in the wash line. So as long as price doesn't close below the wash line, you won't be having a sell. But if it closed below the wash line, so this red, a green color bar will become your wash bar. And then this red color bar will become your green bar. Okay, so therefore your entry would be at the green bar. Okay, now next uh, you can still apply that. See this one here, they kept trying. So this bar here, this green color bar, right? You are also able to draw a wash line. So let me just ask, I'm just going to clean away all this, right? I'm just going to ask those in the webinar and seminar. This bar here, I'm gonna just going to draw one. And this bar here is going to be zero. Now between one and zero, what wash line can you draw? Can you draw a green wash line or can you draw a MAC wash line? Let me just ask the question again. Okay. Now, between one and zero, can you draw a green wash line or a MAC wash line? MAC, raise hand. Green, raise hand. Okay, why? Because the theory is very clear. As long as you want to sell, it must move higher. Okay, when it moved higher, it means that price had a close above the previous high. Okay, therefore you draw a green wash line and when price moves down, this becomes your wash, this becomes your reads. Okay, if you go back and look in the mindset, all right, of machines, machines, machines can see this, machine can see this, machine can see this, and machine try to push again into that zone of resistance, all right? But when they try to do that, it keep on pushing, pushing, and finally, it let go. And that's where the huge moves comes in, okay? And it means that often wash and means are very explosive. Why are they explosive? Because it has the component of regrets, okay? The component of regrets, what is regrets here? It means that when you have the wash bar, the wash bar means that there are people who are doing the opposite direction. Of what is the true direction. So when the green bar comes in, very often it just means one thing. What's that? It just means that you are, for those people who did that wash, will be at a loss. That's all. Yep. Yes. Donate. Later on, you will see me flash things like moving average. You will see me flash things like trend line. It can be anything. The most important thing about this session is only to, one, to introduce to you, all right, the concept of big moves in the market. And don't blame it all to the brokers. The brokers are really not in charge of not dealing with that. Okay. The second thing is that all this old technology, old technique that came from 20 or 30 years ago, I'm not saying that they're not good. They are less relevant. They are new technique coming in because of the technology. Yeah, mm, I would say so, yes. Yeah. Unknown. Because there are so, no, there are so many AIs running. Okay, but I can also tell you that this AI will run on similar concepts. Not all of them are all the same. There will be variations. So we have Bank A or Big Funds G, right? Running a particular AI. And within that, they are running multiple different AIs. But the lucky thing is all these AIs are using one common parents. 
Okay, the different AIs are all cousins and nephews and whatever they, they have, but they are branching off from the same one. So it's unknown how far they can keep on pushing. Yeah. So therefore, the whole idea is that um, if you want to avoid it, don't put don't put your stop loss into obvious levels. Okay, but I always, always tell my students, all right, not to say that you can avoid it. If it happened to you, then you know how to counter it. That's really important. Okay, I mean easier said than done. That's why a lot of them actually trade, huh? Like right now after the training, a lot of them look at these lines there, look at that bullish bar or bearish bar, they pause and they wait for wash and wins to happen. Okay, so later I'll show you recent events. All right, let me just check the questions here. How is the wash and wins winning out? We haven't come to this one yet. So these are two early questions. Okay, we leave it to the third session. All right. Um, I, I, I would say that wash and wins is a phenomena and it's important for you to know this phenomena. All right, I mean, if you don't know this phenomena, then you're missing out a huge part. That's, that's what I want to just maybe that uh, to share today. Okay, next up, any failures? Yep. Uh, yes, correct. I, I have, don't have. I've designed and coded myself. Yeah, uh, it's automated for me. But uh, you don't need to have automations if you are. Uh, yes, it does. Okay. So this is um, another chart that shows the wash and means using arrows and ticks. I'm just going to go through them one by one, right? Okay. Just give me a minute now to find my mouse. All right. Now, this one, it's oil. And the title says that every wrong signal becomes a wash and means for the next entry now why is that so while a wash and means is very good there is a need to still emphasize on the big picture why, why do i say on the big picture now take a look at this red color thick uh, whether it's an arrow or thick it doesn't matter just remember colors okay so i'm just going to mark down all the ones which are red in colors okay so these circle ones are red colors Red colors, red, and a red here. Okay. Now, those which are underlined would be green colors, and they're all the by wash and means. Okay. It doesn't matter in terms of whether it's arrow or this arrow, whatever. We go color coding. Just remember red is a bearish wash and means, green is a bullish wash and means. That's all. Okay. Now, red, we are looking to sell green you're looking to buy okay now generally this instrument here which is oil was moving up at that point of time you realize that the up move is a lot more than the down move okay now you realize that the down move that's being plotted here will generate to you a losing trade agree you see this down you enter already lose money because after that it will turn up okay so what we do is that any methodology we have to actually differentiate whether you are trading in the ranging market or whether you are trading with the trend so how to understand this concept with the trend very easy imagine you have a river the river is flowing downstream is it easier to swim up or swim down swim down right or if the river is flowing upstream Going upstream, huh? is it easier to swim up or swim down? Okay, you always follow that flow of the river. Now, same thing if you look at this chart here, the main trend of this chart is swimming up, flowing up. In other words, it makes more sense to buy than to sell. Okay, so this is very important. So, all methodology we have to differentiate in terms of that trend, all right? So let's talk about revision here, right? So in this particular green arrow here, look at revisor, look at zero and one. 
between zero and one, both in the webinar and seminar, what color wash line do you draw? A green or a magenta? Why magenta? Because you realize that one is lower than zero, right? You want to buy when it is low. One created a new low versus zero. Therefore, you draw a magenta line. I don't want to change my color to magenta line. Just anyhow draw a line. You realize that this one becomes my wash line. Okay. All right. Okay, good. Now, let's take a look at this one here. Same thing. I'm just going to mark with a zero to one. And because immediately I know that there is a wash and rinse happening here. Because why? Take a look at this. Okay. This is a red color. Click. I know that there was a bearish wash and rinse. All right. Now, so therefore, by looking at zero and one, the automatically is being drawn a green line. So there's a small little green line here. Uh, you might not be able to see very well, but there's a green line that's being drawn here. Let me just draw that. And you realize that at the red color flick, that was the rings bar. So this one was the rings, and then this one was the watch. And it has all logical to think about about that because why previously was actually near to a resistance level so this was that high that we always take note of right okay now you find what happened you find that price came down a little bit down a little bit it did try to come down reacted to that particular resistance it did try but eventually it is not successful okay now every wrong wash and winds that we had actually becomes our entry for us for the next entry that means that we are able to be like this um what is this toy that can keep on rocking when i suddenly forget already a pendulum that move uh, in china in mandarin it's called put wong so huh okay but anyway that that's where you have this pendulum become moving right so that's us, you know. That means that when we were wrong, at least we know how to recover that back. So you can see, for example, here, if I mark zero and one, the one, if you look back, we are able to draw in the wash line. Why? Because, sorry, I marked it wrong. I'm just clean that. Okay, let's try again. I mark this one and zero. If you look at one and zero, you're able to draw in the magenta wash line. Okay. And then quickly your entry comes in at the next bar or the subsequent bar as indicated by this arrow here. Okay. All right. So same thing, next one. It goes higher. So this becomes a wash because price had closed above the previous high. So you're able to draw in a wash line here. And then when price goes back down, you see the red color that comes in to suggest the sell, right? But after that, it didn't, it's not successful because it hit into another one more wash line of the higher time frame. So it's, it's a lot more extensive, comprehensive in the whole system. I'm just teaching you one part only. You have to come for the second lesson for the second part. Okay. All right. Then see that immediately it recovered. Okay. With that green arrow, because this was the wash bar. Price close below the previous low, and you're able to draw this line, the same line here, when it will go back up, that becomes our wins bar for the entry. Okay, in other words, if I were to just clean it, okay, so this one here would be the wash bar because if I do this as one and zero, one, it closed below the low of zero, I draw a wash line. Okay, it's supposed to be bearish. But see, it hit into a higher level line, and then instead of continuing to go down, it actually went up to hit above this wash line and resulted in the wins bar for us to continue buying. So in other words, if you can trade with the trend, your return from the wash and wins is actually very explosive. And your loss is minimal if you can trade with the trend. And the key is to go and find what's the trend. All right. The so same thing here, right? Same thing. Price goes up. There will be people who are looking for a sell for sure. You can't avoid that. All right. So same thing. This particular one and zero. One, it closed above zero. Agree? You draw in what color line? Green or matte? 
How about the rest of you? Green or Mac? I just want to revise and make sure you get it correct. How about for those in the webinar? What do you draw at this point? Green or Mac line? One and zero, the one I've just marked. Who say green? Raise hand. The rest, eh? Don't know. Remember, I want to sell, right? I want to sell high. If I want to sell high, price move higher. Therefore, I have to draw a green line. That means I, I'm looking for a down. Okay, so I draw in a green line here. I call this a wash line. Okay, so this one is my wash bar, price pushed up. And you see what happened the next day. It actually pushed back down, right? Okay, so... No, but again, the same thing happened. It pushed into a higher time frame support. And it was, a sale was clearly against the trend at that point of time. All right. Then quickly, we recovered. And we are able to see this one and zero again, where one closed below zero, you draw in a MAC line, and then it closed back up. Our entry was this bar and this bar. And then boom, it goes. Okay. You can avoid all the wrong trades if you insist on one thing. You insist on trading with the trend. But I'm also being very realistic here. When you are trading, right, we actually don't, don't know what is the trend. Sometimes we get very, very confused. Sometimes I get very confused also. Because if you think that this is downtrend, you go to a trainer or you go to a read some analyst report and the analyst tell you this is an uptrend. All right, then what time frame are you talking about? Correct? Okay, so being very realistic, I say, hey, look, forget about the trend. With the watch, that means at least you know when you are wrong and when you can recover back the position. A very, how to say, a very trader type of talk here. That means that all those unrealistic, just throw it out. We talk about what's realistic, how to recover back. All right, any question here? Okay, very good. Good job. Just to let you know, there's no rest because we are streaming live and so there's no toilet break. <laughs> so if you need to go toilet, please go. All right, we continue with it. Okay. Okay, now take a look at this one here. So this is a trade on Aussie Yen. All right, um, for those here and for those online, when you are trading, when you see this movement here, do you love it? Yes or no? Yes, uh, provided you are in the trade. If you are against the trade, you won't love this. All right? But you see, what I am doing right now is I just inserted a moving average. Okay, so this is the moving average, which is the moving average 10. Just any moving average doesn't really need to be very important. I'm not crazy about, you know, what moving average. But I just wanted you to know that this is the moving average. And then the moving average is telling you that it's slanting upwards. And prices are being supported here. So this is the very important message that you need to see from this moving average. All right, so once you have this moving average here, right? And it's pointing up, right? Would you want to place more emphasis on the green color, color arrow or the red color arrow? Yeah. So because the moving averages, when it's slanting upwards here, so this portion starting from here, right? All this place here, you realize that the moving averages are supporting prices. That means it is giving prices a support and is actually slanting upwards. So just by putting in a simple moving average, it can help you to filter your decision between a buy and a sell. You know that a red color, thick or arrow, is against the trend. That means that if the river, the current is flowing up, by taking the red or the arrow or the thick, right? you are actually going against that flow. The flow is actually upwards, okay? So 
very important for wash and rinse, there is a need to filter two things. One is the trend, another one is the levels. Now, this will come into my next part here, which will answer also your question, right? Because I've sort of preempt uh, most of the questions that um, you would like to know. Okay, you are always showing a day time frame. Is it too slow? Because I know, because I'm a trader myself and I train many, many of my students on watch and means whatever time frame that I've shown you, right, on chart uh, is either the weekly chart or either the daily chart. These are the two time frames that I've shown you. And you will be thinking, right, so if I'm trading in the Forex, how come you're asking me to use the day or the week? Am I being too slow? I can tell you the frank answer. The answer is you are not too slow. You are just right. Okay. Now, because if you are fighting with the institution, institutional, all right, on latency trading, what is latency trading? Uh, that means that on speed, they are trading trades uh, in the milliseconds. Okay. They are having automations uh, with so many things. And I, 100% assure you, you can't win them at the lower time frame. That means there is no way that if you're going on the five minutes or on the, let's say, 15 minutes, right? Or into the one minute, you can win them. You can't. You can't win against all these machines because they're probably going to have multiple platforms, multiple AI running at the same time, looking at different instruments, all right, in that mini speed trading. You can't win them. So if, if there is something that I want to deliver very strongly for new traders or for traders who haven't been making money, then this is one thing. Don't go to the lower time frame. Okay. Now, second thing, right, of going the lower time frame is that you would break down easily. It's the same thing as the machine, right? If the machine runs at 1,000 cycles a day versus the machine runs only two cycles a day, which machine is likely going to break down easily or go on maintenance? The one on 1,000 cycle, right? It's logical. Same thing, right? If you are trading day in and day out, keep on going in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, right? Then you will suffer from that breakdown. I suffer that myself. That's why you realize I actually stopped at 35 years old. And then after that, because at one point of time, I, I can make like 8,000, 10,000, 20,000 in a day, you know? Yeah. But after I finished that session, uh, I realize, you know, when you hold the mouse, you hold it like that, right? Hold like that, right? For, for those up there, you hold like that. You know, you hold like that, right? When I finish that session, uh, my hand uh, like that. Cannot move. Why? Because for that 8,000, 10,000, uh, like that, perpetually. Please. I went through that period where I have to... I don't know what it's called chew or maybe you know whatever cycle myself or whatever the money is not worth it that, that's so far i can say all right i really think it's not worth it okay so um the well, one thing i have to do is you have to do multiple time frame in order to win okay what is called multiple time frame it means that you have to do one thing all right you have to have the identification of the pattern in the day, minimum for any instruments on the watch and means. Now, if I can say for any or most of the method, you have to have the identification in the day. That means you see the watch and means in the day, all right, and then after that, you execute your trade in the lower time frame. Okay, so how, would, how do they do it? For example, in the indexes, because of the time duration, all right, because if you take a look at, let's say, for example, you're trading into the STI, Singapore Index, right? Singapore Stocks, right? That trading hours huh, is only eight hours, nine to 12, break, and then one to five, right? On the average of any exchange traded product, only eight hours, max. Now, which means that you can't be using a four hour time frame for your execution to go lower. Because in a day, right? It's 24 hours, huh? one day, 24 hours. If you break down to every candle being four hour, you only have six candles in a day to trade. But if you look at any exchange products where they only operate eight hours, 
which means that 8 divided by 4, you only have two chances in a day. All right? Okay. Now, however, if you look into, let's say, into the spot, spot forex or into the uh, gold or into the oil or into the crypto, you're talking about a trading hour of 24 hours a day. Now, this means that you are able to trade on a four hour time frame where four times six, meaning that you're going to have 24. 24 divided by four is 26, right? So you have likely to be six chances of a trade in a day. Okay. Now, if you are training with the indexes, then you are going to fine tune your trade likely into a one hour time frame, H1. That means that if an exchange product is eight hours, eight divided by one give you eight chances in a day. Okay, so different instrument has a different execution period. For example, you know that I also teach futures for the Singapore, uh, for the um, IBF, okay, Institute of Banking and Finance, or the SGX Academy. So the wash and means, we're also using wash and means in that course. All right, it's a day pattern, but we are fine tuning the trade into every one hour because the exchange product is eight hours, right? And after that, you will roll into a T plus one session. That means a night market. Okay, then we start trading again. But in my own course, where we are trading into the indexes, into um, Forex, all right, or you're using trade into, let's say, the um, IG market make products, the mar uh, um, IG products, right? And then you can fine tune the trade into either a one hour time frame or a four hour time frame. So just now in, in the starting point, right? I said, I said this, I make this remark. In the morning, I exercise. Then I trade the exchange product. And my first trade in the morning in, in of that day happens at 1 p.m. Anybody knows why 1 p.m.? Anybody knows 1 p.m. and especially for those in the webinar? Because the first market starts right in New Zealand. And if you roll back to Singapore time, it's actually at 5 a.m. You count every four hours, five, six, seven, eight, five, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the four hour happens at 9 a.m. Okay, next, huh? after that, 10, 11, 12, 1. So the next hour becomes 1 p.m. That's where I became active. 1 p.m. After that would be another four hours would be 5. And I said before, right, when I came here at 5, my trade was running, but I can move off because of automations. And what was the next time frame that I said? The time? Nine. And I said we're going to end the session at nine, right? That's where the next trick comes in. Now, why is this important to you? I kept emphasizing, if you want to make trading, investing your income, your life, think about what happened in the future. All right. I think about these when I had my children. I was stopping, right? The hand become like that, right? Still bearable, lah. If this one cannot, I train the other one to be like that. What happened if I have a crying baby out there? And then wait, huh? <laughs> My trick here. I can't focus both sides. Okay? So that was when I decided to stop because at 35, I had, in a way, I'm blessed. At 35, I had enough money from trading. Enough, I thought, at that point of time. So I, I was able to to, to, to semi-retire, but I didn't like the life at that point of time, okay? I tried to call everybody, everybody say, you don't need to work, huh? They just, after a while, they stop, me. they stop, they ignore you, okay? All right, so I, I also don't think that's the life I want to have, okay? So I trade every four hours, okay? And I look into the wash and rinse pattern on the day. And I look at all the levels on the week, and I apply these across all instruments. Yeah. Yes. Yes. 
No, that means I still use the zero and ones, all right, on a day chart. I draw the wash line. The wash line, when you put it on a day chart, right, you flip it into the one hour chart or four hour chart, the wash line is the same. And I just look at the one hour candle or the four hour candle to see whether they are above or below the wash line to execute every four hourly or every one hourly, which is called a fine tune in the lower time frame. I want to be faster than others because if I wait until the end of the day, the move might have already happened and I have no more space. Yeah. Okay. So the objective today is kept very simple. All right. But the automations and how to do that, it will happen on the third session. Today, you have only one objective as to understand that wash and means happen. That's number one. Number two is to go back to your chart to go and look for all those trades, right? That have failed and see whether you have wash and means there. And number three, of course, to understand that the market has lots of fix out there. Okay. Yep. Same thing. The lower time frame that you go, the more likely there would be noises. This is a fact. Yeah. So you want to catch certainty, right? Big move, right? You want that. You want to avoid noises, and the solution is to make sure every market are in line with you. Why do I say every market? You have to see that in the 24 hours, what are the key financial markets in the world? One will be Asia. Okay, of course, we have the, the mid, middle, uh, um, how to say, uh, the middle zone, the Central Asia part. Okay, but I just lumped it as Asia. The second financial market would be. Europe, all right. The third financial market will be in, th in terms of zone. The US Americans, right? Now take a look in terms of the time zone. Okay. Now the first market around the Asia region starts with New Zealand, Australia, followed by Japan, followed by China, Hong Kong, Singapore, ends with Japan at around 2 to 3 p.m. Agree? Now, 2 to 3 p.m., who is awake? Europe, right? Starts at 3. And after that, we'll move all the way to the night time, about 9 to 10, and start with who? The U.S., right? Okay. Now, if you take a look at, let's say, a trading, big trading house, all right, then they are going to have their books uh, flowing through the 24 hours, right? If they have the books flowing through the 24 hours, then the first part will start with Singapore time related, right? I mean, in relation five to nine, that's the first part of the book that would be starting with the Australian, New Zealand, and the Japan. Followed by nine to 11, who will be in play right now? Singapore, Hong Kong, China, huge market, all right? And ends with Japan. All right. So every four hours, make sure that you are trading into the major segment. That means the book flow. And when I trade one o'clock to five o'clock, I'm actually trading into the European zone. When I trade five o'clock, the European wakes up at 3 p.m. Singapore time and then firm their books. And then the action are seen at five so that I don't become too early before the big markets move. I move when after the big brother, which is the European side, has already agreed to it, which is I move at five. Okay, so what I'm trying to say when I share the story about these students earning 20,000 from 5,000 using the wash and means method, and then after that, right, what she did, she actually took other people method and then put it in, right, and then she failed. What was the reason there? There's a reason in terms of system design, a system a good system designer, I'm not saying I'm, I am, but I have designed many, many, many systems for many people, many houses, many people out there, many firms out there. We have given a lot of things in serious consideration of how the financial market flows. Okay. And one of the considerations will be on time and how that book flow across the region. 
So we don't, we don't, I mean, I don't actually tell you the integrity things of why you need to trade at each of these four hours. But I mean, if there's a question asked and answer, this is the reason why. Of course, in each of the system design, there are still a lot more um, reasons behind. One of the questions asked from the webinar is um, how to avoid if end up become sideways. Now, usually what we do, right, is how to end up become sideways has to do with alignment of the time frame. So, for example, when Asia, right, doesn't move, Asia will usually become flat, flat. You're going to observe the first eight hours, right, flat, flat. And then the movement, if it ever move, right, will be, will be the first so first four hour of the European time frame. First four hour. That means that the movement will happen at five o'clock, usually. Okay, now, this is also the reason why a lot of movement for STI also happens at about four plus, if you observe that. All right, because if the movement happens in the Europe, then it will be happens at the first bar of that European eight hour zone. Now, the next movement, if it happens for the US, will happen at what time? Will happen at the first four hour bar, which is from nine to one. After that, no action already, literally for the US market. Okay, now, do you know the reason why? Anybody can guess? No, because any of this important data release all happens at the first four hour bar. It's happened, it's the same for European side also. Any release of key data will happen at the first four hour bar. Okay, so how to avoid the sideway market is you don't want to trade into any time. You want to trade at a specific time, especially when key events happen. That is, you want to trade at every four hours. That's one thing. All right. Second thing, don't go for low time frame. When you go for low time frame is where you start to see that sideway one hour, sideway one hour, sideway one hour. All right. To avoid this, I won't say totally. All right. To prevent this in a way is to go for higher time frame. Okay. So one of the questions is uh, to ask me, do you trade full automated or semi-automated? Well, I have quite a, a lot of system, but I personally prefer semi-automated. For one reason, I'm smarter than the machine. I think so. All right. Um, so on the third session, please join the third session. I will show you the automations that I've designed. One of the automations, right? Um, what it does is that you just have to put it there. But you know, I will decide whether I want to put it there. So it's the same thing as your vacuum cleaner, right? You know, right now, I mean, when I was young, right, I lived in Kampong. You guys know Lim Chukang? Okay, and specific to Lim Chukang, you know this small place called Amaking? Oh, you know, Ami there. I just stayed there. Okay, so my mother asked me to sweep the floor. I said, crazy, why do I have to sweep the floor? Why? Because by the time I finish sweeping from this place to the other place, this place already dirty. Why that? Because then it's open area, right? Okay. And and so I, I, I sweep the floor with that coconut casting or whatever. Broom. Now, how do you sweep the floor? Vacuum, right? And worst thing, best of all, not worst, right? You have this automated robot and you press the button. And then, then by the time you come back, it's all swept already. Okay. But I love that automations. That means for the robot to sweep the floor. But I hate the robot to control me. So what I want is I want to make sure I press the button to switch on the robot to go and sweep the floor, vacuum the floor for me at a specific period I want. Okay. So my automations only need one thing for me to actually put it there. And after that, you will handle everything from opening a trade um, putting in the stop loss and target profit, managing the trade, adding position, shifting stop loss, etc. etc. So that's the automations. And I actually encourage for automations because automations, for one, re reduces a lot of human mistake and help you to overcome your psychology weaknesses. Okay, that's very important. All right. 
Okay, so let's come back to here. Oops, now. Wait, ah. Okay, now, so what I have is also that... Um, Oh, yeah. Okay. Can understand. Okay. So what I have, right, is also I have um how, uh, alerts. I'm not sure whether this is something that you want to have, but I I personally like this. So I built um like a a dashboard that let me see all my trade signals, right, in just one glance. Okay. So for me, when I um look at a trade becomes very easy for me because i can see everything at one glance okay, i will talk about all these possible automations that you can do okay so that you can help you to manage your psychology all right the third part the third session for for the day right is also to manage psychology which is actually very important all right so let's come back into here okay so how to strengthen for wash and rinse will be something that you want to know all right and the answer is actually very easy i covered that already one is to use obvious level the other one is to use uh, with the trend so now you are expert so i have drawn in two lines here one line is the red color line okay so let me just draw this one here okay now what do you call this line here do you call these a support line or resistant line price is right now at this place here okay this is called resistance okay because then price and right now below the line so we call this a resistance that means that we suspect perhaps there could be a resistance here based on this line and if you extend this line it's the same concept okay it's hit into the previous low and this was a trade into us 500 by ig what is us 500 it's actually index of s p 500 yes s p 500 now take a look at the date here the date uh, is actually very recent not 2016 uh, not 2018 but april and this is March, right? This is April, right? So I'm talking about somewhere between March and April on the 21st of March. So right now it's October. So it's actually very, very recent. Okay, next one, next question. So these are all very obvious levels, very, very obvious levels. Now when you have very obvious levels, that's when wash and rinse huh, are very likely to happen. So what do you have to do after this lesson? When you see very obvious levels, you have to go and anticipate potentially wash and means might happen. Okay? Don't go and be drawn in by news or by market chatters to say it's going to be very bullish or going to be very bearish. Okay, don't be drawn by that. This is a very obvious level. So when you have this very obvious level, then um, very crazy stuff can happen. And such as this one here. Okay, question to you guys. At this green color bar here, this one, uh, this one, this one here. Same question. No? What question do you think I will ask you? <laughs> Whether you want to buy or sell here, that's my question, correct, you guess it correctly. Are you going to buy or are you going to sell? Okay, but before that, what wash line will you draw? Green or MAC? And I draw you that particular um, one and zero one. So this is one here. And then this is zero. Okay. Green. Green or MAC? Let me see what the webinar site tells me. Webinar, please tell me. I need to see your response, then I tell you the answer. Are you going to draw a green or MAC? Okay, how about the rest of those people in the webinar? Green, uh huh? Green, green? Anybody says MAC? Why, le? Why MAC, le? I know. Between one and zero, one and zero, only one and zero. Ah, oh, yeah, between one and zero, the one that I'm marking one and zero. Question is one higher than zero? Yes or no? You want to buy at high or sell at high? Sell at high, right? Therefore, when you sell at high, you should be drawing in the green line in anticipation 
that it will fail, especially it is near to the resistance. It's a contrarian type of a psychology. I treat you, Munima. That was my, that was basis of my first question, right? It's supposed to spark you up to actually make you think because be, because before you came for the session, you probably were thinking that I want to go and buy, right? Why do you want to go and buy? Because you look at that green color bar there at one, right? It was super bullish, isn't it? Right? So in, in a normal mindset, you'd be looking at buy. But you see yourself transform already? I'm sort of like layered for you and you transform. You see that horizontal level, you know the idea of wash and means, and you know that there might be a wash and means happening, especially in the class here, I've been actually tricking you guys. All right? You see that? But it makes sense because you have to understand the market can see all these levels. It makes sense to display an alternative view to what they really wanted to happen. Okay? Okay. So let's continue. So you will agree that we're going to draw a green wash line here. So that's the wash line which means that if price continue to go up, nothing will happen, right? What if the price close back down? What do you do? Sell, right? Because then this would be a wash and means because whoever who bought at number one would be buying near a previous mountain, a previous high. And if it doesn't continue to go up, then they would be making a loss if price is to actually come back down. Agree? That's the logic, right? Okay, so let's continue on. Yeah, what happened? You see that? So there was this green line that you can draw here. All right, so this, this bar here is your wash bar, and then this bar here is your beans bar, okay? And then this is your wash line. And what happened? They are not happy, you know. They want to push it again. They want to push it into the resistance one more time. See that? And after that, you have another one more wash line being drawn here. Because this is your zero and this is the one. And then that would be your wash uh, rinse bar here. And then these would be your wash bar. See that? Okay. It, it, it keeps on happening. And if you move down, you will never see any bullish wash and means until this part here. All right? And then that's when you have the trend coming in. Why do I say you have the trend coming in? You know that this is pretty much a downtrend, which was very obvious downtrend. So this is DT, a downtrend. All right? And then if you can take this one and a zero, all right, or we can then continue with that erase all and we take this one and zero you realize that one actually close higher than zero you can draw a green line okay and then you take two and one two and one two is actually higher than one right agree and then you draw a wash line but it's only the recent wash line that price have a wins bar here okay now you you see this whole big wins bar here it's long right by the time you wait until the end of the day, a lot of money will be gone. Your stop loss will be too high. That's when we fine tune to trade this in either the one hour chart or the four hour chart. That's how things go. Okay. So trading is, is, is easy, but you have to, you know, if you are doing it yourself, you have to go and figure them out. So we already have this, and then um, why we are we sharing this? Because then, well, if you think the other way, right? Uh, when more people knows about it, it's actually not good for me who have design and talk about wash and means. But I can assure you, I've designed so many systems for so many clients. They look almost sort of the same, but the retailers somehow, they are losing money. 
it doesn't change, right? So I don't think that by knowing or sharing this, it will change anything for, for me. All right, because there will always be one part of people who doesn't know about watch. I mean, it doesn't really matter. But what matters is that you now know if you have failed or, or not being very successful, at least you know one of the reasons is what I mean, and you change a little bit of a mindset. All right, so next question to you. Price is right now here, right? You see that? And it's near to the support level here. So what are you looking for? You're actually looking for a buy, but on condition, there is a wash and means. When these levels become obvious, right? Weird things happen. It will always, always happen. Okay, so this is very, very um, important. All right. Okay, let's continue. Next one. Now, the other one to increase that probability to, to use trend. So IG has this tool there, right? Which is to set up your moving average. So if you have your platform today, that means you have brought your computer or your iPad or whatever here. We have staff here. They can help you set up these moving averages and they're very useful. One click button, brah, all the moving averages is all come out and it tells you the trend very easily. So this is the same thing, the same chart on US 500, which is S&P 500, the same place that I've pointed out. You realize that just by putting in the moving averages, it tells you that you can only take one type of a wash and means. Okay, and that one type is a sell wash and means because the trend based on the moving averages, they're all down, isn't it? Okay, because the current is flowing down. So if you were to buy it, then you are actually against the trend. It's not high probability. All right, so you take the sell side by using and filtering your trade using moving average. So if you do have questions on the use of IG platform, then you know um, IG staff will be here to help you. Okay, to set up all right, the moving averages for you to spot the wash and means. It's not tough. You see, easily I can find there's a wash and means here, washed, and then means, and then here there's a wash and means, and then somewhere here there's a wash and means. Okay, so they are all um, can be spotted easily. Okay, now. So we're gonna do some live because I have another eight more minutes. Okay, so those in um, the Ethan, can you just help me? I, I need to the IG platform. Well, I take some questions again. Okay, one of the questions, right, was the chart there. Chances of breaking up at 50%. I think I covered this one already. Okay, so this is a chart which I've actually used to draw that. And let's take a, take a look at A50 here. Okay, now this is A50. Um, I need you guys to focus into first to answer the question. What is the trend of A50? That's the first question here. And second, what is the time frame of A50 that I'm using? Time frame is daily, which means that every one buy is one day, right? And then what is the trend of A50? Downtrend, correct? Agree? Okay, when it's downtrend, is it easier to swim down or easier to swim up? Okay, that means that it's easier to trade downside, right? Agree, huh? Good. Now, next, next. Huh? Now, take a look at this horizontal level here. So, that was previous resistance. Okay, but if you were to use IG2, there is this very um, easy tool for you to draw the lines. Okay, take a look at this pen here. Now, you are able to draw in a trend line here or any horizontal level. So I'm just gonna park on the horizontal level, just draw a horizontal level somewhere around here. Okay, you know that it doesn't really come to it, but because there are some sub levels at this small little tail here. Okay, so you might you know want to draw in a um, zone. Okay, we have here a horizontal level. Okay, 
Now then, another way to put in the trend is you want to draw in like a trend line. So I'm just going to take this trend here and start connecting some of the high points here to, to some of this point here like that, you know, connect them or connect them, right? You realize that I'm able to connect them and then at this point that I'm trying to highlight, which is here. Okay, and then subsequently it resulted in a huge down. Yes, yes, got it. Now, so the basis here, the, the bias, huh, that means the top thing that I want to do is because this is a downtrend, then the conclusion is I want to sell. Okay, and because I want to sell, the second step you want to do is I want to look for a wash the means and therefore if i want to sell i want to sell high or sell low sell high right okay sell high so if it's a high then what color line should i draw green or mac green so i should draw a green line okay exactly you have to be contrarian yes and you realize that whatever that I'm doing is math. So students have to get used to me because I always write the traits in mathematical formula. I mean, she trained in statistics. Okay. Now, so I'm just going to continue that. So I take this two here. All right. If you want, you can just draw in a short little line or whatever. All right. But um, you can do this point to point thing line. All right, and then the first one you draw would be this one here. Okay, and I want to change it into a green line this time around to make it proper. Okay, a green line here, right? And can I use this wash line? The answer is no, because there's a new bar being formed already. So this one is higher than the previous one. So I'm going to take this two again and then take this point to point and then start drawing. All right. Okay. So you realize that your our trade, huh? that means our trade happens at where? At this particular bar here. This one. Okay. When price actually wash and means below the green line. So this is your wash. This is your greens bar. All right. So if you don't want to fine tune your trade, you can short at the close of the bar or at the start of the bar. So for us, we actually fine tune the trade to trade in between that four hour interval. Okay, and then off we go. Now earlier, we actually traded on the buy side here. So once it hit the top, we trade on the short side. Okay, all right. So coming back right now, I know that you might not be trading into CN50. All right. But then let's do the analysis here. All right. So since we have the CN50, and then we take a look at the trend. The trend is down, right? However, what, what's happening? The price is we just shift it. It's actually near to the low. You see that? I see near to the low here. See, obvious level, obvious level, obvious level, right? Obvious level, right? Okay. Now let's draw in the wash line. Okay. I'm just gonna clean everything away. Let's draw in the wash line here. Okay, now I'm just going to give you an assignment. Eh? Question to you. One and zero. Can you draw a wash line? Questions to the webinar side as well. One and zero. Can you draw a wash line? Yes or no? Webinar side? Your answer? Uh, just to answer the webinar question, right? Yes, I go to the lower time frame in a counter trend, 
but I'm cautious about the counter trend. Okay, in the with the trend, I'm usually more aggressive. In counter trend, I'm usually uh a bit reserved. So one and zero. Can you draw a watch line? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes or no? One and zero. Can you draw a wash line? Yes or no? Who say yes? Nobody. Sick question. Who said no? Okay, good. The one haven't finished yet. Very, very good. Okay, next one. Zero and minus one. Can draw or not? Zero and minus one can draw. Now. Actually, one and zero cannot draw, huh? Because it doesn't close above or below, close below the previous bar. So the question to you is zero and minus one can draw? Yes or no? No, cannot. Why? Because zero doesn't close above or below minus one. Okay, next question. Minus one and minus two can draw or not? Yes or no? Question to the webinar side. Minus one and minus two. Can we draw? Who say yes? Yes, very good. Yes, because minus one close below minus two. Here we go. Now, what is the implication now? Do you see what's the implication? The current price. To the wash line, it's so far. See that? Okay. Now, if you were to wait for the wash and rinse to go up to happen and the trade that, your stop loss is going to be so much. Okay. That's a lousy deal. All right. So, a good wash and rinse will never result in such a lousy deal, which also means that if you have traded wash and rinse for long, it will likely consolidate until it falls that little bit of a boom. So those people who are commandos in a trade, that means they go in earlier, would likely find that their trades are being washed out in terms of stop loss. And after that, you will just go up if there should be a resume in that opposite direction. That means to go up. Okay, so this is also why you find that very often you are being stopped out after that you will resume up, okay? So that's the reason here, because it needs to create a wash and read the wash line that has a tighter stop loss, okay? All right, with this, I end my session because, um, why, why end my session? Why, anybody knows why? Yeah, on 9 p.m., what am I doing? <laughs> okay, I'll pass the session back to Ethan. Oh, yes. Okay, so um, just let me flash a little bit more slides. Just let me clear all drawings. Okay, so I think the session from Bini today has been very insightful. I'm sure everyone that attended, be it whether you're here on the seminar or if you're attending this online, I hope that you managed to get some value out of today's session. So if you have already been trading and have your own strategy, I'm sure today's session can also offer you a little bit more perspective in terms of you know when you are looking to execute your trading decisions. So um, I will be uploading this uh, recorded webinar on both our academy and also on our YouTube channel. So if you think that you, you want to revise again, you want to listen a little bit more and a recap of what you have gone through today, just feel free to head on to uh, both our YouTube or our IG academy. So just to introduce you a little bit to our webinar library in case you're not familiar. So we have this webinar library. Um, under, you can just Google for IG Webinar Library Singapore or in the trading platform, right? If you go back to this, uh, my IG over here, right? Just let me show it. On the top right hand, once you lock it in, once you log into your trading account under the dashboard, right? On the top right hand, you notice that there's this Academy button. So this is where we upload most of our resources as well. So if you're new to trading, there are causes. And if you want to recap on some of the, you know, 
uh, previous webinars that we have conducted, right? Just feel free to go over here and just, you know, have access to some of the webinars that we have uh, conducted previously, okay? So just wanted to very quickly introduce you to webinar library. So the next one is on our socials as well. So if you have Instagram, you want to follow us on Instagram, please feel free to search for IG Singapore. Um, on your Instagram and just give us a follow. If not, this will be something that is uh, should be more useful to uh, for traders. So in IG, right, we actually have our in-house anal uh, analyst as well, who's giving his views. And we also have some content from uh, Daily FX, which is a wholly owned subsidiary content publisher that's talk a lot about, you know, the analyst view and trainings as well as their own forecast. So we actually post a lot of these uh, market updates and some of the technical analysis, some charts that uh, our analysts uh, prepared as well in very small bite-sized content. So let's say if you're traveling and you have time, you want to uh, know what's happening, uh, no, uh, more more high impact news just have a look just swipe through our telegram channel we have this uh content here as well and of course on our upcoming events so let's say if you if you run like trading workshops like that upcoming webinars we also post them in the telegram channel as well so if you have telegram right just feel free to scan this qr code or search for ig asia in telegram okay and then just just follow this if you if you like Okay, the last thing that I wanted to share today is on our account opening promotion. So let's say if you are new to IG, right? Actually, right now, um, till the end of October, we actually have uh, running this account opening promotion, whereby if you open an account, fund a minimum of five thousand dollars, and just place one trade, any trade, any size, we, are, we will be able to credit two hundred eighty-eight dollars to your trading account as a limited time promotion. Okay, so of course, if you're existing customers, then um, this won't be applicable definitely. But we also have referral promotions if you refer your friends to IG. Okay, so before I end off today's session, don't mind, uh, I'll just put this QR code here. So uh, I uh, just give it a scan, if uh, be it online or here, uh, give some feedback for our event. So let's say, uh, so, so we know what you, you guys want to listen to as well, what kind of content you like as well. So this will actually give us an indication of what, what sort of content, you know, we can bring to you in our upcoming web webinars um, to give you the most value as well. So if you are new to trading, maybe you, you want a, a more basic kind of webinar, just let us know. Or if you're already trading and you, you prefer something even more advanced or you know if you find that this webinar this kind of content is good just let us know so we can also try to cater to your needs as well okay so um with that i'll leave this qr code here for about one more minute i will see if there are any questions as well related to okay, okay. yeah just give me one second it's all this right I have two things to share. One, join the second session because the second session will be new and different also. Never, never seen this before. It's called Auto Box, something that I designed as well as a continuation to the wash and rinse. And for those in the webinar, please come here because we have lots of food. All right, we have some food. We have nice food. And for those in the webinar, please go and eat some food. Okay, don't waste them. Thank you. Okay, so um, I hope everyone can give your feedback. So with that, I'm going to end the session here. So those here in the seminar, right, if you have questions on IG or you want to talk a little bit more to Bini, just feel free to look for us here at the front. If not, I'll be ending this online webinar already. So again, thanks everyone. I'll be uploading the content online on our channels. If you have questions, just feel free to let us know. Yeah, if not, yeah, yeah. I'll be ending. Okay. Good night. Thanks, thanks, everyone. thanks for those people online. <laughs> See you here in one marina for you. <laughs> okay, thanks everyone. Have a great evening. Bye. Thanks, you guys, for coming here.